The C programming language. C is a lower level language developed in 1972 and requires a brief understanding of computer memory. Data is stored in bits of one or zero and there are eight bits in one byte. In C, we have diverse data types that allow us to store distinct types of data and memory. Characters are stored as chars, while integers are stored as ints. Other data types exist for floating point values or larger numbers. Their respective sizes and bytes are listed to the right. Declaring variables. To declare a variable in C, you begin by specifying the correct data type, followed by the name of the variable. You can then initialize this variable to a desired value using the equal operator. You can do this all on one line as shown in the flow example below. Remember that every statement in C is ended with a semicolon. In C, we have what are known as header files. These are pound include statements that include standard and non-standard libraries. We use the less than and greater than quotes for any standard C library and double quotes for any of our own files we want to include for our use. This gives us the ability to use useful functions such as scanf and printf. For a hosted environment, i.e. not an embedded system, every C program needs a main function. A function also needs a return type, in this case, an integer. When using the printf function in C, we need to use format specifiers to specify the data type we are printing. In this example, we have the percent %d and percent %c for ints and chars. The scanf function in C allows us to take in user input from the command line. We use the ampersand symbol to pass in the input address. We are then able to print out the user input. There are a number of operators in C. The arithmetic operators are your typical plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulus operators. A quick example of this arithmetic would be adding two integers together. 10 plus 12. The result of this operation would be 22. Moving on to bitwise operators, we have a bitwise AND, OR, left shift, right shift, and exclusive OR. Our logical operators, not to be confused with bitwise operators, are logical AND, logical OR, and NOT. Unary operators in C are extremely important for any increment or decrement behavior, and are found in most loops in C. Relational operators give us conditional statements and are found in almost all loops and functions in the C programming language. Besides the equal operator, assignment operators allow us to both modify and assign values to variables in this notation. If and else statements. In C, we can create a conditional situation by using the keyword if, followed by some sort of condition. If our condition is not met, the program will execute the statement presented in the else clause. In this first example, i is less than 10, so the output would be the printed value i. If we change our conditional statement, the output would be 9. Switch statements. In C, we can use a switch statement to implement state machines for time-ordered behavior. A switch statement takes in one parameter which can be modified to hit each of the case statements. Make sure to add a break after each statement, or your switch statement will not function properly. If current state is equal to 1, the case 1 statement will execute. If it is 2, the case 2 statement will execute. If it is 3, the default case statement will execute. While loops. A while loop will continually evaluate as long as the while condition is true. We start out by declaring a few variables. In this case, b continues to increment until the a not equal to b condition is false, after which our c variable is printed out with the amount of times b was incremented. For loops. This is one of the most important loops in the language. The basic structure of a for loop involves declaring a variable i and having a three-part conditional statement, i is equal to zero. As long as i is less than 10, we increment i and evaluate the statement in the loop. Our output for this example would be 21. We can declare arrays in C by specifying the data type stored in the array, followed by the amount of that data type in square brackets. In this more complicated example, we pound to find a macro value of the amount of elements we have in the array. We then use a for loop structure to iterate through the i indexes of our array. We then print out all the even elements found in our array. Pointers. You can have a pointer of any data type. In this case, we initialize an int pointer using the asterisk symbol before our variable name, ptr. We can have our ptr point to the memory address of the variable x. 
we can then use the dereference operator in the print statement to print out the value that pointer is pointed to. In this more complicated example, we first initialize our int pointer. We then declare an array of five integers and have our pointer point to the array. This points automatically to the zeroth index in the array. We can increment the dereference pointer value and print it out. The value printed would be 2. If we just increment the pointer, we will be pointing now to the second element in the array. This prints out 4. Functions in C A function in C needs to be declared before it is used in the main function. Here we declare a function called ArrayFunc that prints out the elements of the array. We then call this function in main by giving it the proper parameters, an array of integers, and a number that it iterates to. Structs. A struct is similar to a class. Using the struct keyword, you can create a type with different member variables. In this function, we can create a person named John with a name and age attribute. We can then print out or modify the member variables associated with John. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe for more double E content. Thank you for watching.